The first thing I wanted to do today was to review um, using the ideal gas law, right? So we're gonna have a problem in which we have um, sodium, metal, and we're gonna put hydrochloric acid, and it is gonna make sodium chloride and hydrogen, right? That is what you're gonna have. They're gonna have three grams of sodium chloride, I mean of sodium, and you are going to be at, um, at a pressure of five. We're gonna be at a pressure Millimeters of mercury, and the temperature is going to be 25 degrees C. And we want to know the volume, we want to know the volume of hydrogen that is being made. Uh, Vivian, can you turn off the lights and see if that, that's better over here? Volume is equal to question mark. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, so what do we need to do? You don't have to draw the molar island anymore. I am gonna do it just so that you all know the steps. I like doing it. But this was the first and last quiz when we did that. We are going to start with uh, the mass of sodium. That's gonna be my known. And we're going to finish with the volume of hydrogen. So as you know, in the molar island, it doesn't matter where I start and where I finish. This will always be my known, where it is in the reactants or the products, or within reactants, or I mean within products or within reactants. And my unknown, Again, it's always gonna be to the right, regardless of where it is located on the molar island. I like to do this, nothing else in your brain, but sometimes writing it out is good. If you make a mistake on a quiz like this, and I see that your molar island was right, I am more likely to give you credit than if I don't see the molar island and you made a mistake, I'll just think you don't know what you're doing, right? So it will help you, it can hurt you. Then I go to what is being asked, is being asked for volume. And this immediately tells you what you're going to have to do. You're gonna have to go from grams to moles. That's gonna be your first conversion factor. So I'm gonna start at three grams of sodium. And my first conversion factor is gonna be taking it uh, the molar mass of sodium, is it 27 uh, maximum? I can. 23 grams per mole of sodium. According to this, I have a second conversion factor that is the stoichiometric coefficient. Before I do that, I need to balance. So I put a two over here. That changed my CLs and that change my sodiums. <coughs> now the stoichiometric coefficients are for every two sodiums, I make one, so one hydrogen. For every two moles of sodium, and by the way, you really need to put this sodium because um, people end up forgetting and then they start putting things with hydrogen or other things. That way your sodiums cancel and I'm gonna put, there's one mole of hydrogen. Now I am over here. Then I'm gonna do the last step. The last step is a conversion factor. We talked about how if we um, have a gas at STP, you know, hydrogen is a gas. 
but it's not a STP. I told you that the temperature was 25 degrees C, right? So that's not a standard temperature. The standard temperature is zero degrees C. 273 Kelvin, um, 32 Fahrenheit, right? That's not it. And the pressure is not one atmosphere. All the standard pressures, are they on that side of the box? So it's 760 millimeters of mercury, 760 tor, 14.7 PSI. That's not it. So that's not a standard temperature and pressure. I cannot use 22.4 to go from here to here. I'm gonna have to use uh, the BP equals NRT, the ideal gas law. So BP, doesn't matter, is equal to NRT. In order to do this, you will have to do this. This is not gonna be a choice, ever. There is a choice on the molar island, but there will not be a choice on this. You will have to declare your variables here. So you're gonna write B, P, N, R, and T. Anytime that you have a problem in which you have to use the ideal gas law, you are gonna have to write those variables. Volume is what I want to know. I want to see the question mark in liters, just in case you forget to put the units. That is what we want. That's what the problem is asking. I also like to draw things right there, like the three grams and the volume, so that you know. Pressure is 100 millimeters of mercury. I don't wanna write that. I wanna write it in the units that either liters, atmospheres, mole, or Kelvin. So I'm not gonna write 100 millimeters of mercury. I'm going to convert those 100 millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. So how do I do it? Anybody knows how, uh, Bibi? What is the conversion factor between millimeters of mercury and atmospheres? How many millimeters of mercury are one atmosphere? They're on the box. Well, actually, I'm asking the wrong person, Elizabeth, because you're so far away. That's what I mean. How many? Millimeters of mercury is one atmosphere. Everything in there is one atmosphere. 760, so that's my conversion factor. 760 millimeters of mercury at one atmosphere. So what is the, what is 100 divided by 760? 0 0.76. 0 0.76. Um, Let's assume we have uh, two significant figures. I didn't quite put it. Let's see three. C zero point seven six one. Zero. Okay. So we are gonna go zero point seven six zero atmospheres. I'm gonna put that here. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, oh, she, she's probably right. I don't know. I just tried to do it in my head. You did in your head? Well, I just saw, I just thought it'd be like that because it's like a hundred. Oh yeah, you did it backwards. Yeah, it's I wasn't one, paying attention to what he was saying, oh, okay. yeah. One, you did 760 divided by a hundred. Yeah, but I like flipped, yeah. 0 0.131, you see how much attention I was putting? Um, so this is in atmospheres. 0 0.1315. Should you put the right amount of significant figures in your variables? No, you put as many as you have. You will never let, you, you are going to write the right amount at the end. But through the process, you just write at least four. Uh, the number of moles is what we're trying to find out. No, I have the number of moles. How many moles do I have? Three divided by 23 times two, right? Three divided by 23 divided by two, 0 0.065, 
to one or to two uh, moles of hydrogen. So I stopped it because at this point, since I'm gonna use the ideal gas law, I cannot continue with a stoichiometry. I'm gonna have to um, stop it right there at moles. So the number of moles I just found, right? 0 0.06. Five to two moles of hydrogen. So all of this is for my gas. R, does anybody, has anybody memorized this? 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. And the temperature we said it was 25 degrees C. Uh, what is that in Kelvin, um, Sophia? 25 degrees C to Kelvin. Plus 273.15, right? So it's about 298. Wait, how do you find that? You add 273. 15 to any degree Celsius and you get Kelvin, right? 298.15 Kelvin. Wait, how would you find that? Oh, you just add the two. Add 273.15 to Celsius and you get Kelvin, okay. right? So, since I have a board, I can erase everything just so that things are more clear. Now I'm going to use my formula, BP equals NRT, but I am going to, the moles will be given, are given, this given, this given, I'm gonna solve for V. V is equal to NRT over P. Everybody okay with that? We see how we get that? I'm just isolating the unknown, putting it to the left. This is very useful when you get into physics because you need to write your variables, any math, literally. You need to write your variables and then you need to write your formula. Ideally, you will solve for the variable first so that you don't have to carry all sorts of things and then you plug in your information. So. This is going to be number of moles, 0 0.06522 moles, R, 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. And yes, you have to write it every time, times your temperature. Your temperature is um, 290. The temperature is 298 Kelvin divided by the pressure 0. Point, uh, 0. 0.1315 atmospheres and you end up with atmospheres and atmospheres cancel, Kelvin and Kelvin cancels, moles and moles cancel. The only thing that I should see is still standing is the liters. And then you do all that calculation and you get two liters. So the volume in liters is what? 12.13. What do we, what significant figures are now? So now we go to three significant figures. So it's 12.1 12 point, 12 12, 12. 12 .1 liters. You do all your calculations and then you round to the amount of measure. I gave you, I'm telling you, I told you I gave you three, although you don't really have three, but I told you I gave you three. So we're gonna round to three significant figures. Um, if you got a bonus point on the test, it's because you did your significant figures right, yes. Wait, how, how do all those variables cancel out? So the moles, because the units for R are liter atmosphere moles Kelvin, right? 
So the moss cancels with the moss, the Kelvin cancels with the Kelvin, the atmospheres cancel with the atmospheres, and you end up with only liters. That should be clearly labeled, right? And then you find your volume, and that's all there is to the ideal gas law. So if you use it from here to here, this is how it looks like. Does that make sense? It's just one more step. And if you have STP, could you use the ideal gas law if you, gas law if you have a standard temperature and pressure? Yes, but you shouldn't because 22.4 will make your math so much simpler, right? Um, so what I used to say is, hey, if it's an ideal standard temperature and pressure, it's like Merry Christmas, you're pretty much done. But if you're not, then it's not bad, but it does require a lot more um, cumbersome. Um, are we okay on that? He is falling asleep. How many of these is he gonna take? Uh, are we okay on this? Everybody? Maybe I need to put water here and then wake up. Yeah. Okay, now what we're gonna talk about is um, empirical formulas. Some of you may have already looked at it. Uh, empirical formulas are the um, simplified versions of a formula. So if I have C6H12O6, if I have glucose, the empirical formula will tell me what is the ratio of the atoms, right? So I simplify to the lowest number and I get that that will be CH2O, right? <coughs> because I can simplify by six, right? So that's easy. It's just the ratio, the ratio of the numbers. Now, we're gonna look at a problem and that will literally take care of the problem that you have on the study guide. Um, Cause you have to work them all out and we'll just work this one together and you will review it on Mastering Chemistry if you have not done so already. And then we're gonna do another type of problem. So in this one we have Nutra Sweet, the sweetener that we use every day at home. Nutra Sweet is made out of carbon, 57.14 percent. Um, when we use percent, we can also call them grams because again, it's gonna be about a ratio and percents um, are ratios. So we can use just grams. And 6.16 hydrogen, 0.16 grams, 9.52 nitrogen, 27.18 oxygen. So we have a compound, Nutra Sweet, that it is made out of C. H O no C H or C H O N normally that's how I write it C H N O yeah C H N O and we can find the ratio we can find the number of moles so what we're gonna be looking for we're gonna be looking for um, these numbers A B Z no a, B, C, and B. What are the, the moles? How many moles of this per moles of that, right? We need to find the moles. We have the grams, so if I wanna find the moles, what do I do? Use the molar masses and convert it to moles. So for carbon, it's 12.0 grams of carbon per mole. For hydrogen, is 1.01 grams of hydrogen per mole. You're literally just looking them up in the periodic table. For nitrogen is 14, 
14.0 grams of nitrogen per mole and for oxygen 16.0 grams of oxygen per mole of oxygen. I've got the answers to that so I'm going to wait to make sure that we don't get ahead. If you find it yourself kinesthetically, it's better for you than if I give you the answers, honestly. If you want to learn something, when you find your own numbers, it actually uses other parts of your brain and you're more likely to remember what you did. If you just copy what I write, then uh, it's fine, but it's not the same learning according to studies. So I'm gonna write the numbers, but if you do it yourself, I had per people, I had some of you type things wrong in the calculator several times. So I don't think, I think you understood the process. All the things were written properly and the answers were all wrong. So some people in here never actually did the problem themselves. And um, first I graded it all bad and then I'm like, wait a minute. Then I started looking and I'm like, wait, they did everything right except the fact that the answers are wrong. So they're not having the orders of operations right on their heads, right? So that's wrong because that means that you never did this. You've just been copying things down. So you have 4.76 moles of carbon. You have um, 6.10 moles of hydrogen. You have uh, 0.68 moles of nitrogen and you have 1.70 moles of oxygen. Now, could I grab these moles and just write in here 4.76 and 6.10, 0 0.68, 1.7, do you think I could have that? No. You've never seen it. That's not showing me a ratio, right? If you want to do a ratio, it's like, hey, I have a hundred of one thing, right? I have 50 or B, right? If I want to do the ratio between those two, I can divide them both by the smallest number. And it tells me that the ratio is one to two, right? There are two of these ones in that one. Right? So it's a ratio of one to two. That is what we're going to do next. We're going to find what is the ratio, right? How many times does one fit in the others? So what we do in here, because it's literally nature and it does come in ratios, this is not completely unorganized, there is a ratio. Uh, we're going to divide them all by the smallest. Like I divided by 50. I'm going to divide all of these ones by 0.68. just in order to get the ratios right. Again, the only reason is to get the ratio of the mole, so I can write a good ratio. This is 0.68, that's the smallest of all of them. So I divide all of them by the smallest. You know, when we had the 100 and the 50, we divided them both by 50 to find how many one fit in the other. So the same thing here. We divide them all by the smallest number, which makes nitrogen one, because I did that on purpose, right? Dividing by the smallest. Um, for the other ones, I'm getting seven for carbon and I get 
which in this case is pretty much nine. You know, you're not, you don't have to get 100%. That's way too close to nine. And then this one, I'm getting one, and this one, I'm getting 2.5. Could I write 7, 9, 1, and 2.5, uh, Elizabeth? No. You've never seen, you know, fractional coefficients, right? It will be okay, but no, we don't do that. We, we try to make them all whole numbers, kind of like when we do an equation, right? And we have a fractional coefficient, we just multiply everything by something. Why would I multiply everything by Fairfax? Yes, you have 7, 9, 1, and 2.5. What will make them all whole? Two point five times what gives you what? Yeah, so we multiply everything times two, right? And if I multiply everything times two, it may seem like big numbers. I get um I get 14, which is a huge number, 18, 2, and 5. This is literally a ratio, right, of the elements. This is going to tell me the ratio of all the elements. So yes, now I can get my compound and write um, C14, H18, N two and all five and I get what uh, neutral sweet does the chemical formula for neutral sweet final answer. final answer yeah we don't have to do anything else to this so if it's close enough to like a whole number if it is really close you just make it the whole like nine point nine seven that really is nine okay. right but if it's like two point five no yeah. and in this class we're only gonna multiply times two because I just want you to know the process. I'm not trying to see if you know your fractions, right? We are gonna have a problem next in which we're not gonna multiply times two. It comes easy to some of you, it would have not come easy to me. So I, I'm not gonna expect you to know. I don't know if your calculator will do it. It did it to some people in another class, but do we understand this? Okay, so this is how to find the empirical formula based on the different masses of a compound. Now what we're gonna do is figure out how do you get the masses of a compound? How do they know what masses you have in an organic compound? So that's chapter number two. Let's go ahead and make another video for that. So this 